Hello, welcome to ADSR Pro with me, Mike Smith. Uh, today we're going to show you um, setting up a template from scratch in Cubase 5. Uh, again, a rough guide. You don't necessarily have to do any of these. You know, use your own imagination. Um, I'm just going to get you to a, a rough starting point. And uh, yeah, I hope you find it informative. So basically a few things we could do to start with um, is probably add a few audio tracks <clears throat> straight in there. Let's choose five. May use them for side chains, um, samples, loops, etc. Um, then let's instantly, what I like to do is maybe get two or three batteries up and running. So, uh, battery, let's have one, two, I also use uh, contact um, quite a lot for, for similar sorts of things. Uh, the reason I do battery, um, let's start with battery one, let's call this kicks, call this one hats, call that one perk. Right, so file open kit. And let's have these are all the <clears throat> samples, like I've said, that I've I've put together myself uh, over the years and created loads of banks. It just means I can be productive. I've instantly, rather than searching through um, hundreds and hundreds of sample CDs, just finding particular hits, I've already got you know five hundred. 700 at my fingertips straight away it's just so i can be more productive open kit okay um let's have percussion so instantly if we create a part you can see there hundreds of kicks That one doesn't seem to be rooted for some reason. Let's, let's have a look. There we go. So as you can see, instantly loads of, loads of things to get started with. I may also put a couple of VST instruments in there. Um, you know, fab filter, create. Maybe uh, stylus RMX. I use that loads and loads and loads. I'm going to do a, a tutorial just on stylus at some point. Uh, I find that such a useful and productive tool um, just for getting unique little additional bits for your loops. It's fantastic. And let's have a trillion. Okay, create. So, trillion. Fab filter. Let's call that RMX. I like to label all my stuff <clears throat> um, as I go along. Makes life again a lot easier. You're not searching for things within the Cubase mixer. Um, also, <clears throat> I like to turn things in and off here. Um, so VST instruments, MIDI channels. I hide MIDI channels because I, I tend not to use them at all. Um, I do all my automation of MIDI usually in here in the piano roll editor. Right, what I'd also probably do, press F4, open up the VST connections. The first thing I'd do would be to add however many groups you like, let's say five, 
initially I'll call that main side chain. I'll maybe have pads or lead side chain. We'll also have a drum bus, possibly. Um, parallel compression bus. And let's just call that one spare to start with. Uh, again, another idea might be to get a kick sample in there uh, just for the trigger for the side chain. Again, you can let's have that one. You can change this at any time. It's just a good starting point. All I've done there is duplicated. What I like to do is highlight it, audio, bounce selection. Boom, there you go. Nice solid kick there now. Um, let's call that side chain trigger. Like we've done in our side chain tutorials, I tend to not root it and root it via the send. So if we go to help if we set something up on our side chain so main side chain there we go let's put a fab filter pro c turn the side chain on back to our kick there we go and that's it turn that on that quick so we'll do the same with the pad side chain. So on the group channel, we put our Pro C compressor, turn the side chain on, and then this is the beauty of how I tend to do it. Now I can send it here to there you go pad side chain. So effectively, we can have eight have eight side chains just from this one kick channel um, plus the automation which we talked about in my side chaining tutorial you may want to check that out also on my YouTube channel so roughly then to start with um, you can see there we have a load of audio tracks ready to drag loops etc straight in uh, we've got a trillion, so we can get some bass, bass sound straight away. Stylus Aramax for some extra loops and percussions. Uh, fab filter synth in there. Hundreds of kicks, hundreds of hats, hundreds of percussion samples. That effectively is, you know, just a, a quick overview. Um, also on the F4, we could probably add effects channels. I tend to have no effect. Let's add four of those. Again, what I've, I do in Cubase, I tend to create a nice effects channel. Let's go on effects one. Let's have um, a reverb. Let's put... There you go. Let's have the reverb on there. I'll set that up and that possibly may be... Um, there we go, let's have a drum plate. So for the drum bus, etc., or little individual hits, I can center that. Then once I'm happy with this channel setting, if you right click, you can save selected channels. This allows me, when I'm starting up a new template, to be able to um, create a blank effects ch channel, right click and load selected channels. So instantly I'm saving time and I would definitely recommend spending the best part of a day at least just setting up a template. Think of all the things that you're using a track, 
get them set up, get your side chains on there, maybe get your basic mastering effects on your master channel, um, you know, four or five different effects channels with your long reverbs, your short reverbs, uh, maybe a chorus, a flanger, etc. Um, a load of audio tracks chucked in there, five or six different uh, instruments, so you've got even the preset of the instrument, make sure you've got for instance, if you're doing a house track, you may want just a real nice, round, solid bass. Get that in there and ready. So when you open it up and you're going to do a house track, you've got a, a really, really, really good starting point. Um, it just allows you to be productive instantly. You know, and I find one of the most frustrating things over the years is opening up Cubase, or any door for that matter, and just being sat with a blank canvas thinking, oh, I've got so much work to do just to get it somewhere near. This for me is the most cost effective way of being productive and actually getting on and writing music, which is the most important thing after all. So as per usual, um, this has been Mike Smith at ADSR Pro. Um, only a quick tutorial again. However, please feel free to ask me questions, subscribe to my channel and you know get involved. If I can do anything to help, drop me a line. Till next time. Yeah.